Guys, welcome to another Healthy Indoors Minute. This one's off the cuff because I'm in the middle of a work day, but I just wanted to take you into a very special room for a moment and show you some air quality measurement devices and talk a little bit about how they work. So this is my dry vault. Yeah, that's air tightness, baby. This is the world's highest performance uh, tool shed. You can see that I keep all my diagnostic tools in here. Uh, and over here, I have my little setup that I would like to show you specifically. I have three consumer and prosumer grade air quality monitors and they're all glowing very nicely. That Those are colors that you wanna see by the way, greens and blues, yay, very nice. Now what we are looking at here is here, a spec. This only does particle monitoring and I believe it's only PM 2.5. This is the CPS Smart Air uh, IQ uh, system. This is the pro version, which I don't think is any different than the consumer version. This one is pretty new. And this is the FUBOT. The spec was a, a very nice gift from Bill Spohn at True Tech Tools. And I like it um, for the size and the simplicity. And you can do a little tracking thing here where you can see what the last 12 hours has been um, and the last hour. But that's pretty much it. Uh, the CPS system as you can see, it just changed color. It might be because I'm standing close to it and I'm, it's a hot day and I'm a little bit sweaty. Uh, is the newest one. I'd like to hit on this one first. The FUBOT, I had some experience with. Um, this one was a gift from Rob Minnick at Minnick's HVAC in uh, Maryland. Uh, he's a friend of mine. And when we were on the road, he said, hey, track this stuff. This is fun. So we tracked this. The issue with this one, which we saw work at Home Chem the experiment that happened last year, is that it takes seven days to get its readings to be accurate. Also, um, this one's going to do carbon dioxide estimated uh, particulate VOCs temperature relative humidity. Um, and I think that that's it. So it's doing some calculations in there. It, it has a fairly good uh, tracking system, but the amount of time that it takes to get a reading and the... Um, questionable accuracy. Honestly, I've seen this one at work in a room where we had four of them set up and half of them were telling us blue and half of them were telling us orange. Blue and orange are good and bad, which is the way that they break it down into consumer grade stuff. Um, the CPS one is the newest one and I have yet to really be able to beta test this one. Um, I will say that the app is a little bit confusing at the very beginning. First of all, let's talk about beginning. Supposedly, this one only takes a few minutes, like literally five between five and 15, 20 minutes to get its readings to be accurate. That's amazing. If I'm going to use this on a job, I'm not going to use this one because it's too simple and also not really sure about the accuracy of this for a reason that I will get to in just a second. This one, way too long. And also some of the estimations. This one measures, honest to goodness, carbon dioxide, measures uh, VOCs, particulate 2.5 microns and particulate 2 at 10 microns. And then it'll also do temperature relative humidity. Um, now, I will say that all of these I will be uh, leery of unless I start testing, testing, testing. The whole point of this channel is test. Test as much as you can. Keep this thing running as much as possible is the idea. But in all of these cases and in with any other air quality monitor, what you want to know is what you are testing and why you are testing it. First of all, let's take particulate matter as an example. PM 2.5 stands for particulate matter that is 2.5 microns and smaller. Uh, that number that it's going to give you is based on weight. It's based on mass of the particles, not on count. In all of these cases, if you're spending thousands of dollars on a particle counter, that might actually be doing a count instead of a mass uh, weighting. So what these are actually picking up is only the biggest particles within that zero, you know, one nanometer to 2,500 nanometer size. You're, you're seeing mostly 500 nanometers up to 2,500 nanometers, which is the same as 0.5 microns to 2.5 microns. You're not going to see any of the small stuff. The small stuff is what's going to get way down into your system and get into your bloodstream through your lung lining. That seems like a problem to me. Um, PM10, which only this one does, is going to be uh, tracking the upper respiratory irritants that are going to be around. Dust, dust mites, you know, stuff like that that's going to give you coughing, sinus issues, uh, sneezing, things like that. 
Also, VOCs, which these two measure, is actually not, according to the scientists at Home Chem, a very good metric for measuring indoor pollution. Because if you walk into a bakery with either one of these, and you set it up for a few minutes or for seven days, you're going to get off the charts VOCs because anything you smell, whether it's good or bad smelling, is a VOC probably. Uh, it might also be a little bit of particles in the case of burning stuff, but in general, VOCs are not bad by themselves. They're a marker. And so the question becomes why, not just what can I measure, but why am I measuring it? And if it's because some certification or standard says I need to measure it, then I don't have to question it and I just do it because I've been told what to do. If it's a question of I'm trying to help people solve a problem, which is what I do in home performance, then I want to know why I'm doing it. And maybe I don't want to give them that number because it doesn't make any sense. In all these cases, they, they give you some like dials that'll say, oh, you know, here's the good range and here's the, the not so good range, changing the color from blue to orange, for example. But um, in general, you also want to know the raw data so that you can help to interpret those numbers because just taking somebody else's m marker of good and bad, blue and orange, isn't necessarily what a true professional is going to be able to do. So it's really important to dig into the science of like how they're measuring what they're measuring, why you would want to measure it, what the data means, and then what all that stuff means for human health, building health, things like that. So testing is important. Make sure you know what you're testing and why you're testing and all of the background information, which is hard to do sometimes. I hope that uh, this has been informative for you. Please stay tuned to the rest of the testing videos that we do. Stay tuned to the build and to the home diagnosis television show. Thanks to Healthy Indoors Magazine for putting air quality on the front page. Tune in next time.